Hello everyone and welcome to the Fry Smiles Oral Health Network. I am your host, Scott Fry, and today on the show we are going to continue on with our series of posts on TN2 staining to talk about how different processing methods of tea result in different amounts of staining. Now, for whatever reason, I used to think that different types of teas came from different plants or something like that. But you all out there probably are already aware of this, and I feel really silly looking back, but all these different types of teas come from the same tea plant. It just depends on how they're processed after they're picked. Now, this processing is called oxidation or fermentation. And what happens is they'll pick the tea leaves and they'll go ahead and intentionally break them or roll them and then leave them in a climate controlled room to go ahead and oxidize. And then whenever they're done, they'll go ahead and treat the leaves with either steam or some high heat to stop the process. And the white tea leaves, the white teas, uh, are going to be something that is completely unoxidized. And then on the absolute other end of the spectrum, you're going to have your black teas, which are fully fermented, and you, your poo-er teas, which are not only fully fermented, but they are aged afterwards. And what happens in this oxidation process is the oxidases will go ahead and start breaking down the chlorophyll in the tea leaves, and also the small polyphenols will begin to combine to create larger polyphenols and the tea leaves will get darker during the oxidation process. Now, the two main polyphenols that result from oxidation are called, or types of polyphenols, I should say, are called theoflavins and theorubigins. And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that second one right. It's always a bit of a tongue twister. There's also a third one that's only really present in the poo type teas, which is called which are called theobrownins. Now, these polyphenols are specific to teas, and not only do they give the teas, the leaves, and the actual tea in your cup its color, which would happen to be a darker or kind of a reddish brown color, but they are the two most notorious staining compounds. And when you think of tea staining, you're thinking of these two particular polyphenols. So, should change this to say, with greater oxidation, you're going to get more theoflavins, more theorubigins, and you're going to get more stain. Now, not only are these two particular compounds uh, going to produce more visible stains, as we've mentioned before, but these particular polyphenols have a very high affinity for the surface of your teeth, so these stains are going to be stickier, so they're, they're going to deposit more readily on the surface of your teeth. And for both of those reasons, because they're visible and they're sticky, you're going to experience more stain with more oxidized teeth. So as we've mentioned, a really good way to determine how much staining you're going to get from your teeth um, how much staining on your teeth you're going to get from drinking a particular tea uh, is to go ahead and look at the color because these are the particular compounds that give the tea the darker, the reddish colors um, from the oxidation process. And the bottom line is if you want uh, to reduce the amount of staining on your teeth that you're experiencing from tea drinking, you're going to want to choose a white tea, a green tea, or something that's very lightly or not even oxidized at all. So that way you can limit the amount of staining that you're going to experience. So I thought this was a really cool post today. I hope everyone enjoyed it and I'll see you again next week. Take care.